let's look at our idealized generator and think about how much power we expect to get from it and where it comes from. And power, of course, I mean, the joules per second, how much energy per unit time. So I'll draw it a little bit less realistic, even more idealized, by thinking about a magnetic field into the plane of the board. And then imagining our loop, I'll draw it in the board like this, like that, and then it goes to a circuit with resistance R. Everything else is the same, it has area A, this is B, and somehow this whole thing is gonna rotate at omega. So how much power will be dissipated in the resistor? Well, at this point, you can treat it very similar to how we thought about DC circuits. Um, we know that uh, you're gonna get an EMF that we already calculated, EMF, it's gonna be applied across the resistor, so the power is, in a DC circuit, it was IV, it was I times the voltage across the resistor. Well, here it's just I, the current that you get, times that EMF. You're putting that EMF across a single resistor, so it's pretty much that simple. And you can also use the same substitutions. We said it was the I times the delta V, or in this case, I times the E. You could also write that as E squared over R, because E equals IR. If you wanted to get the current, it would just be the EMF over R. You could write it that way, or you could write it as I squared R. It's really just these two equations being combined in different ways, just like it was for the DC circuit. It's usually good to use the one where you know all the parts. Right? We haven't calculated the current before, we could, we haven't. Um, so let's just go with the EMF and the resistance that we were given, even though we could easily get the current if we wanted to. Okay, so P in this case, would be, let's see, the EMF squared is basically every one of these factors squared, N squared, B squared, A squared, omega squared, sine squared, omega T, over R. That's basically it. So everything there kind of makes sense. If you had more coils, you'd get more power. If you had a stronger B field, more power. Bigger uh, loop in the generator, more power. Go faster, more power. It should always be positive. Good, thank goodness we squared the sign. It'll always be positive. But look here at the R. So if we just have this thing rotating, this is all steady, right? Ro or well, it's steadily rotating at omega. This is all the same. And you go and you start changing R, it looks like you're gonna change the power. So often it's called the load. R load, it's just whatever system this generator is, is working on. So you'll see load a lot in electronics. So if we have smaller, our load, we have more power. So this implies that this thing is just sitting here spinning. It doesn't have a set amount of power it gives out. It's, it's gonna depend on the load. And that is actually true. But let's now go back and look at the mechanical thing that's doing the spinning.